On this episode, I'm going to be showing you 10 tips on how you can secure your garage door to prevent thieves from breaking in your home through your garage door. So stay tuned. Welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. In my other video, I showed you how to tank out your entry door. So if you missed that episode, check out the link on the top right here and I'll show you how to fully secure your entry door. But first, let me show you how thieves break into your home through the garage door. And you're probably wondering what is the pull cord doing hanging. So thieves use this cheap and commonly available tool, which is pretty much the coat hanger, which they take it out and bend it into a hook like this. So right now, I want you to go in front of your garage door and look at the upper seal. If you see any light going through or even just a tiny bit of gap where a wire could go through there, then you have an issue. You want to see if you can adjust your garage door so you can fully seal this. They can easily access this pull cord. So now that they gained access to the emergency pull cord from the outside, all it takes is a simple yank like that and this garage door is fully released and they can easily prop it open by hand. So friends, I'm not trying to scare you in any way. I'm just trying to raise awareness and show you how thieves can easily break into your home by doing that simple technique. But don't you worry, I have 10 tips to show you and the first easy one that you can do to prevent that from happening is this one. So tip number one is using vice grips. If you look on your garage door, there is this vertical rail. There's a lip right here. Just take your vice grip. You're just gonna attach your vice grip like so. There's no way that the rollers can penetrate here. My suggestion is you don't install it anywhere on top where they can easily get that coat hanger or wire and pull it out of its place. If you don't like this method, then let me show you method number two using locks so if you have a padlock like so something similar with a very large shank like that all you have to do is take one of these padlocks put it through those holes and then lock it in place if this is too small like so you can just easily get a drill and drill it out to make it a little bit bigger for the padlock to fit place that through lock it in place and no way this these rollers is going to pass that because this is blocked the third tip is probably the hardest one to do, and that is using scissors. Yes, you guessed it. Cut this pull cord right here. So you don't really need this little red pull handle. If you see a knot like this on the bottom, you can just untangle that easily. You don't even have to cut it. If you take this off, you can literally just take this anyways and still pull it. So this doesn't require too much pull force for this to break loose from its emergency connect. So taking this off will help prevent that hook from getting a snag so that they can access the string, which gives me to tip number four, which is cutting again, using your scissors and cutting the length of the string. This is about 38 inches long. Now that's fairly crazy long. Given this was probably made longer for, you know, for probably children, just in case they need to get access to this right here. Again, this method number four is not for everybody. What you can do is you can take this cord and kind of lean it right there to where it doesn't go all the way from the outside where in case someone tries to hook this it doesn't have enough length for them to access it from the outside so you do the measurement it varies per garage you just take your scissors and then just cut it tip number five is using tie wraps zip ties or these little things right here not very heavy duty i don't recommend you using the very thick ones if you're interested on these as well i'll leave all the tools that i use in this video on the bottom of the description of this video check out those links but if you look through there where the arm meets the rails it all depends different garages have different size holes right here this one i'm just going to use a smaller tie wrap because that's one that fits okay so by doing that this helps prevent the pull cord from getting pulled just like that and from the outside it's going to be making it super difficult this is strong enough so that this doesn't get pulled from the outside but it should be flimsy enough for this to get pulled if you apply enough force, down force, in case of an emergency, you still need to pull it. Word of caution, if you do end up doing this, there's still some possibility that you might have a very, very hard time 
breaking this if you pull down. So in case of an emergency, just take that into consideration. Again, this method, not for everyone, just showing you that this is an option. If you don't like tip number five, let me show you tip number six, and that's by using this garage shield. Pretty much it's just this little hard plasticky uh, material right here. It comes with a lock, very easy to install. All you have to do is place it over the arm where it connects the door to your rail. Let me show you a closer look. Slide this up to, up to where that arm is, and then you can position this anywhere. There you go, nice and secured. So the purpose of the shield is, for example, you have somebody trying to fish your pull cord out. They won't be able to access that because the shield is not in the way. But given it's not 100% proof, they can still get it from a different angle and can still possibly gain that cord. But again, it just makes it difficult to access this pull cord. Now with this shield still in place, you can still have an operational garage door. Again, if you're interested on this garage shield, I'll leave the link to get this product on the link on the description down below. So check that out. Tip number seven is using one of these lock devices like so. So pretty much all it has on the back is a spring. And what you can do, and it comes with self-tapping screws, you can actually install this on the side. Pretty much all it is simple device. You can locate it anywhere in your garage door. You can drill. Uh, a channel through there so that this we can go fully engaged through my garage actually has a little channel on the track Right there for that to go through but what I need to do with that one is I need to make the hole a little wider for this to go Pass through there. This is very useful if you don't have a garage door opener and you manually just open your garage door by hand This is a great way to lock and unlock your garage door. So this too, I'll leave a link on the description down below if you're interested on this. Tip number eight, very easy to do. If you have an automatic garage door opener like this, before you leave the home or you go on vacation, go and simply just unplug this thing. All right, friends, so second to the last tip is installing a alarm sensor. Now this is my alarm sensor. It goes, it's magnetic like so. It comes with my security system. This is typically installed on my, my doors and windows. Let me just show you. So here's an example where this thing is actually located like so. It's uh, magnetic, so if this opens, it pretty much alarms or it beeps on the inside, lets me know that the door is open. So same thing, if you go through any security company, uh, mine just happens to be ADT. What you can do is you can have this, have them install this and they can have it positioned to where this will connect so that if this gets moved or this moves out of its place, it will alarm. It will cause a deterrent for any thieves trying to get in. So friends, we made it to tip number 10 and that is by connecting your garage door opener to your smartphone. Very high tech nowadays. If you look in your garage door opener, um, the newer ones have these Wi-Fi or MyQ uh, app that you can install on your phone so that you can control your garage door opener through your smartphone. So let me just show you what I have on mine. So I have this MyQ app and it pretty much connects to my garage door. So this will allow and tell me if my garage door is open or closed. And I have the option of this also to open and close my garage just by a push of a button. So if there's anything that the garage door accidentally flips open or not, it will alert me again by having the option again to connect your garage door opener to your phone and with the added security sensor like what we did on tip nine with those two added, you can easily determine uh, the status of your garage door if it's open or closed. So friends, those are my top 10 tips on how you can fully tank out your garage door to prevent thieves from breaking in. If I missed anything or if you have any suggestion that you do differently from any of the tips, please leave it in the comment section down below and share it with the community. And also, if you found this video super helpful, please hit that big thumbs up, press the subscribe and notification bell, and make sure you check out my other videos up here concerning garage doors because you will find those super helpful as well. So thank you so much, friends. I'll see you on the next one.